Welcome to this Blackpool Music School video all about the mandolin. This is a mandolin. The shape of the body, this is a sort of teardrop mandolin with a few cuts in it, doesn't make much difference. It's the tuning that makes it a mandolin. So let's get started. The bottom two strings are tuned to E. The next two, two strings are tuned to A, the next two D and the next two G. So it's E a D G. Those of you who've played guitar will know it's basically the guitar turned that way round. So if you have a guitar if you're a guitarist and you used to play in this way, the way to think about the mandolin is it's being turned upside down so your chords are sort of inverted. But if you don't play the mandolin, let's get started. We'll start with the first chord, a G chord. So let's get started. The third finger goes on the bottom string at the third fret. These metal things going down are frets and this is the nut. So it's one, two, three. So the third finger goes on that string there and the idea is you cover both of them. If it sounds like this, you're actually on the fret so move back a little bit till it rings clear. And that is the first finger of a G chord. Your middle finger goes on the second fret of the A string. So, this, so you've got the third fret of the bottom string, second fret of the A string, and that's your G chord. And we're just going to strum down for now. Two, three, So I'll go for that again, 3rd fret with the 3rd finger, 2nd fret with the 2nd finger, and these two strings are open. And that is the G chord. Now you have the G chord, let's move on to the C chord. This is relatively easy to do on the mandolin. You've got your G shape there, yeah? All you do is keep that shape and move it one string up that way. So now it's the third fret of the A string and the second fret of the D string. That is the C chord. Again, if you go back to your G shape, all you do is move everything up one string that way. And that is your C chord. So we'll do four on G and four on C, like this. One, two, three. That is your C chord. We'll go for that again just one more time. You know the G chord? Move everything up one string this way. And that's your C chord. Now that we have the G and the C chord, you need one more chord to be able to play some songs. So we'll get started. This is the D chord. A bit different now. You've got the second fret of this thick string here the top string here, and the thin string at the second fret there. And this is your D chord. So on your thicker string, the second fret, and on the thinner string, the second fret. And that is your D chord. I'll go for that again. Second fret of the thicker string, and second fret of the thinner string. Now we have three chords, we can start to play a song. So we're going to do four strums on each chord. Four strums on G, C, and then D. Like this, after four. One, two, three, four.
we'll do that one more time. We are simply strumming through the strings. I will cover more strums in a few minutes. So, G chord. C chord. D chord. G chord. C chord. D chord. G chord. C chord. D chord. Before we move on, there's one more thing you can do to the D chord. You can add your third finger to the third fret of the A string, and that becomes a D7 chord. So you've got G, C, D7 now, and G. So you can, you can either use the D chord, or add that finger and make it a D7. I'll explain that more in future videos, but if you can practice both D and D7, it's useful to know. So one more time, G, C, D, G. Now that you have the chords G, C and D7, we can try a few more strums. I use a plectrum, and there's many sizes and thicknesses and all sorts of materials they're made from. It's purely a personal choice. Uh, I use quite a thick plectrum, as you can see, and this rubber grip just gives me something to grip onto. You hold the plectrum something like that. So your hand's like that, and it fits there. So you see it's sort of like that. Yep. How much you show is again a purely a personal choice. Some only show a little. I use it about there. But for now, we will practice some strumming. So we'll just stay on a G chord up here. What you're doing is strumming down all the strings to one. We are counting one, two, three, four, but strumming one, two, three, four, two, to each count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if we know our chords, we'll do G, C and D again. We're doing this one, two, three, four. You must keep a steady pace. What you don't want is this. I'll over exaggerate this, but you'll get the point. You don't want one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You must say one, two, three, four. Keep that rhythm and change chords accordingly. So we'll do four on G, four on C, four on D, and back to G. So it's like this, after four, one, two, three, four. is a very basic guide to strumming four beats to the bar. When you can strum four beats to the bar, you can add an upstroke on the and. So it goes something like this. Instead of counting one, two, three, four, we're going to count one and two and three and four and. 
So you don't count slower, you fit an and in between each count of four. So it's one and two and three and four and. Okay, so on the and you're strumming up. Now when you strum up, you only have to catch a couple of strings, you don't have to catch them all. So it goes something like this, just on a G chord. One and two and three and four and. Again, one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. So. We'll add that to the song now. G, C, D. Okay? One and two and three and four and. Okay, so it's again, it's one and two and three and four and. So now you've got two strums, but you can vary them up. So the first time we're going to do one. So we'll go for that again the first time round on the G. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. Any order you want. The only thing that matters is you keep the downstrokes on the pulse of one, two. When you can play the G, C and D chord, we'll add one more chord to the mix. The reason we do the G chord this way is if you take your third finger off and add your first finger to the first fret at the bottom string, that is a G7. Now this is used from going from G to C. It just sounds a bit more musical than like this. So okay, we do a G chord for three beats. On the fourth beat, we change the G7, then to the C chord. So you get It just sounds a bit more musical than jumping from a G to a C. Again, we take the third finger off and add the first finger to the first fret and that's a G7. So to change from G to a C, you do the first three strums on the G. To count it, it will be Go for that again. One, two, three, four. 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 
Now that we can play three chords, we can now have a go at the 12 bar blues. So let's get started. We will just be using downstrokes for now until we get the rhythm in our head and then we can move on. So, four bars of G. One, two, three, four. First bar. Second bar. Third bar. Fourth bar. After that, we change to C for two bars. Another bar. Then two bars of G. Then one bar of D. One bar of C. Then two bars of G. So we'll go through that again. Four bars of G. Two bars of C. Back to G. One bar of D. One bar of C. When you can do that, we can add a bit of rhythm. This time we're going to be using upstrokes as well. Upstrokes. One, two, three, four. First bar. Second bar. Third bar. Fourth bar C. is the 12 bar blues in the key of G. When you can play that, we'll add a little bit more to it. When you can play that 12 bar blues pattern, there's a little bit more we can add to it. It is the G7 chord, like this. So for the first three bars, you just do a normal G. Fourth bar, you do one and two and three and, and change to the G7 for four and, then into the C. Then back to G. Then one bar of D. One bar of C. Two bars of G. Do that in context so you can hear it, it goes like this. something you can do with the G chord. There is something you can do with the D chord and that is to lift one of the fingers off when you're strumming. So you can go like this. So we're doing the D chord. It's one and with it on. Take that first finger off. I'm over exaggerating this in reality. You've just got to lift it, lift it off a little bit. So it's one and three and four. 
in context with the song with the other G7 bit. So we'll go through that again very slowly. For three bars, you just play a normal G chord. For the fourth bar, one and two and three and G7, four and into a C chord. Back to a G chord. D chord, that is one and two and three and four and C chord, and two bars of G. And that is how you can play the 12 bar blues on the mandolin in the key of G. There'll, there'll be more mandolin videos to come. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please subscribe to Blackpool Music School and give us a like. There's descriptions down below and links to all Blackpool Music School's projects, shall we say. And videos and much more besides. If you can, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and spread the word about Blackpool Music School. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep playing. Welcome to this Blackpool Music School video all about the mandolin. I nearly said ukulele and guitar, then I do make them videos as well. Anyway, let's get started. Like I said before, this is a mandolin. This is a different rhythm. You should now have the 4-4 and the waltz time rhythm, hopefully sorted and, can, and you can perform it well. There is a couple of variations we're now going to do on the 4-4. On the first video, we were. This is just on a G chord, please. Thank you. So, on the first video, we were just strumming down one, two, three, four, and then we went to one and two and three and four and. Well, there's, you can do other things with it besides. You can do what's regarded as a country strum, where you pluck down, pluck down. So the plucks are on one and three, and the strums are on two and four. So it's one, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Again, we're plucking the that string, the D string on the one, strum down. Then I'm plucking the A string on the three, and then strumming down. When I strum down, I'm always going through all the strings. So we did this again just on a G chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the beauty of the mandolin, like the ukulele, is you're nearly always playing all the strings at once. So actually you can pluck any pair of strings you want on the one, on the three. It really makes no difference. So in this case we'll do a G chord. So I went one. Strum all the way down, two, three, four. So that time I'm just using them pairs of strings. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Or I can use the middle two. So if we were to do that over the 12 bar blues again, you get this sort of sound. So we'll go for that again very easily and quickly. So you've got one, two, three, four, four counts. On the one and the three, you pluck a string. On the two and the four, you strum down. So on a G chord, it'd be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if we did the 12 bar blues, it'd be one, two, three, First bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar, change to a C, first bar, second bar, back to a G for the third bar, that but yeah, D, C, two G's. And that adds a country time rhythm to your strum. All you need to remember, on a mandolin you can pluck any string you want, you will always be in tune 99% of the time. There's very few chords that doesn't use all of the sets of strings. So on the one and the three, you can pluck any of them you want. On the two and the four, just make sure you're strumming down. And that is the the country 4-4 rhythm for you. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Blackpool Music School for more videos. In the link down below, you will find links to our Twitter and Facebook page. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. And until next time, goodbye.
Welcome to this Blackpool Music School video all about the mandolin. In the last video you saw me play the mandolin in 4-4 four, four time. This video is in waltz time or 3-4. I'll be using the same chords G, C and D7 but this will give you another rhythm to play with. It's, there's many rhythms in music but 4-4 four, four and 3-4 four are probably the most common in European music and American music. So let's get started. We will use a G chord. This time we're going to pluck the individual G string there. So we go one, two, three. That would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one. When you go to a C chord, you still pluck that thick string there. One, two, three, one, two, three. Back to G. One bar of D, one bar of C, two bars of G. And that's really all there is to the waltz drum in a basic pattern. There's a bit more to it which we'll add later on. So we'll now do the 12 bar blues in a waltz rhythm. So there are four bars of G. One, that's the first bar. That's the second bar. That's the third bar. That's the fourth bar. Change to a C chord, same rhythm. One. Back to G. D chord. C chord. G chord twice. I will now play it through at normal speed. I will write the chords down below and it's one bar for each letter, that's all you need to remember. So we'll do it again, four bars of G. Two bars of C. Two bars of G. One bar of D. One bar of C. Two bars of G. The only thing you need to remember is you mustn't pause in between changing chords. You can't do... When you're counting one, two and three, you must keep that rhythm constant. So that's the basics of the waltz strum. There is one little bit more you can add which gives it a bit more swing and it goes like this. You do normal G chord, the one is there and you do two and three and. So it's one, two and three and. We'll do that again, just a G chord up here. Put that, you put the thicker string there. Two and three and one, two and three. So to the 12 bar blues, it goes something like this. That'd be the first four bars in G, two bars of C. Back to G. One bar of D. Two, one, uh, one bar of C, sorry, that's me. 
two bars of G. And at speed, at normal speed, Again together, so four bars of G. Two bars of C. Two bars of G. One bar of D. One bar of C. Two bars of G. Now a little bit of music theory for you here really. This is rhythm. Tempo is the speed you play it at. So you can play that really slow. One, two and three and one, two and three and or fast. Rhythm is the count in the count one, two, three, four, or in this case one, two, three, and tempo is the speed you perform the piece at. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please subscribe to Blackpill Music School and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. All the links are in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And until next time, take care and goodbye.